welcome to this course on elements of mechanical engineering. In this lecture, we are going to study screw thread cutting and honing operations. My name is D.A. Ramacharilo and I am working as an assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering. In the previous lectures, we have seen different types of operations that are related to lathe machine. Now in this lecture, we are going to see a screw thread cutting operation and also honing operations that can be performed on a lathe machine. Now let us see, a screw thread may be defined as a ridge of uniform cross section that follows a helical or spiral path on the outside or inside of a cylinder or tapered surface. So screw thread is nothing but it is a helical type or uh, spiral path which is created on the outside surface of a cylinder or inside surface of a some mechanical plate. So sometimes we have to do this on a tapered surface also. So why do we need this? So in most of the mechanical applications we use nuts and bolts. We see these nuts and bolts in our day to day life as well. So these nuts and bolts what they will do? They will lock together when they are rotated. You can see this type of uh, nuts and bolts are very common and then we have a nut here. Okay, So these nut and bolts they can be used to assemble some mechanical parts. Okay, They can be inserted uh, through if there are two plates both of them has holes here they can be kept on one another and a nut and bolt can be inserted and uh, it can be tightened so that we can get an assembly. These two plates can be joined together with the help of uh, this uh, screw nut and bolt. So this nut and bolt arrangement is not permanent. We can remove this and we can reuse. For this, we have to make thread cutting on the outside part of the cylinder. This is threading. And also on the inside of this bolt, we have to do the threading process. Okay, there are two threads we have to do. One is the outer surface of the cylinder of the nut and the inside surface of the bolt. Okay, we have to do threading on these two surfaces. Not only this, we have to do threading operations in many applications. But as of now, we are studying screw threads. Uh, particularly, we are doing this process on lathe machine. So, we are studying the screw thread cutting process. A screw thread may be defined as a ridge of uniform cross section. The first thing we have to have is it should be uniform cross section. The cross section of the cylindrical bar, it should be uniform. Otherwise, we cannot get a smooth uh, movement of the thread or when we want to screw this, we, we cannot get a smooth motion. So the path that is followed by this is helical or spiral path. So this is also important, helical or spiral path has to be taken when we are doing this uh, thread cutting. Okay, So this thread cutting operation can be done on a lathe machine by using some important aspect called lead screw. So on a lathe machine we have this uh, tool called lead screw. So what is the function of this lead screw? It will try to move. It will try to move the tool along the helical path. We have seen here, we have to cut serrations or we have to make grooves on the cylindrical surface in a helical way. It is not straight, it should not be done in a straight motion. We have to do this in a helical way. Suppose if this is, this is the cylinder on which we have to make uh, thread cuts. So I have to go in this direction. It should be done in helical motion. So this entire path is same. That means starting from here, if I go on rotating, I will end up at this point. So that I have to make this helical type of uh, thread cut for making it possible for rotating of the screw. Okay. Otherwise, we cannot uh, make the bolt to rotate on this object. Okay. We have many applications of this uh, threads starting from nut and bolt arrangement to jack. Uh, generally we use this uh, screw jack. 
स्क्रू जैक इज द वन डिवाइस विच इज यूज फॉर लिफ्टिंग कार्स और ट्रक्स इन ऑर्डर टू रिप्लेस द व्हील्स ओके इफ यू वांट टू रिमूव द व्हील्स वी यूज सम स्क्रू जैक ओके वी यूज टू कॉल इट एज लाइक सेफ्टी जैक और समटाइम्स इट इज कॉल्ड एज जैकी ओके द स्क्रू जैक इज यूज फॉर लिफ्टिंग द व्हीकल्स इन साइड द स्क्रू जैक वॉट वी हैव वी हैव ए स्क्रू थ्रेड अरेन्जमेंट when we rotate the screw it will move up it will move up the vehicle so that we can simply replace the wheel with a new wheel okay and then tapper threads commonly are used for water or gas pipes and plumb plumbing supplies okay tapper threads where we use this we use this when uh, we have to use the pipes for water or gas pipes and also plumbing supplies which require a water tight or a tight connection when we want to get this type of uh, connection like a tight or water tight we should always go for tapper threads okay tapper threading is done in order to get tight finish and thread traditionally have been machined but they are increasingly being formed by thread rolling in olden days what they do is we will take a cylindrical bar or a cylindrical hollow bar on which we will cut the threads on a lathe machine but nowadays the thread cutting process on a lathe machine is very hard that means it requires a skilled operator that is why a new technique the, the thread rolling operations are being done where thread rolling itself is done on the rolling machine itself while uh, manufacturing or forging okay we can do the thread rolling there only so this is how uh, a screw threads is required necessary and it is done on the cylindrical objects and then you can see in this picture this is a helical thread cutter here we have the tool here we have a cylindrical object a cylindrical bar is there where i am moving the this uh, moving the tool in particular direction in this direction i am moving the tool where i can get the required depth of the uh, thread see here at this point this is the initial diameter this is the initial diameter but this is the depth of each thread so this much of amount has to be removed okay this is the depth of the thread so this amount of material we have to remove carefully without disturbing this serrations so these are called as a thread teeth so these teeth they should not be disturbed we have to carefully remove the material from the helical view that means the helical path has to be maintained and it has to be removed the material has to be removed through this helical path only otherwise we cannot use this for a thread that means we cannot use uh, for it uh, screwing okay screwing operation cannot be done and uh, threads can be machined externally or internally depending on the particular application both of them we have to do with a cutting tool by process called thread cutting or threading so the operation done on the lathe machine is called thread cutting or threading internal threads also can be produced with a special thread tool called tap so internal threads can be done with the help of this tapping tool we are going to see what is this tapping in the coming lectures and uh, tapping is nothing but it is a very hard material which has threads on it when we make this material make this tap rotate into a hole we can simply form thread cuts okay so that is how tapping process is done and uh, external threads can also be done by other processes like with the help of a dry or by milling also we can do thread cutting okay in the picture we can see we are using a tool in order to do this thread cutting process see here this thread cutting process it is very hard because we have to move the tool manually or by using some kind of machine even though we have to make sure that these teeth they are not worn out they should not be done in a cylindrical manner they should be done in a helical manner that means if i do this in a parallel manner i will get all vertical lines okay but i have to make the screw not only rotate on the surface it has to move forward okay whenever i take a screw here if i want to 
rotate this screw on this uh, like bolt, what happens? If the threads are vertical in direction, I will be rotating on it. I will not be moving forward. Okay. If I want to make it to move forward while rotating, then these uh, threads should be helical in shape. That means they should be inclined. They should be inclined like this. They should be inclined so that the nut or the bolt which is rotating on its surface, it can move forward and it can hold in that particular position. Okay, it can hold in that particular position for loading. Loading conditions also can be done when the thread is used. Okay, so that is why the thread cutting operation is very hard in case of this uh, lathe machine because we have to make all these uh, teeth all these teeth surfaces has to be as strong as each and every one so they have to be have same strength okay i cannot have one teeth which is stronger and another teeth which is weaker which will make the screwing process very hard and also it will make the screwing joint very weak it will be easily it slip out okay so this is the process where uh, thread cutting is done and then we can see some more examples here we have some figures so this is threading process which is done on the lathe machine so initially we have to do one set of lathe cutting that is first cut it is also called as a first cut where we will get these inclined serrations on the surface of the uh, cylinder cylinder uh, object and then we have finished threads where we can get finished threads on the surface we have to do this again that means we have to do it very carefully so in the first cut, we have to make serrations which are away from each other. And then in the second step, we have to do the threading again by filling the gap between the initially cutted threads. Okay, this is the finished threads. And then we have different types of uh, cuts also. We have said earlier, there are teeth which are, which are made on the, see here, they are, these are called, these are also called as pitches. So the pitch has to be in different manners, okay? Depending on the particular application, we can prepare different types of pitch, okay? So this is called a radial pitch and this is a flank and this is incremental pitch. So depending on the type of application, we can prepare different types of uh, these pitches. And then this is an actual photograph of uh, turning the sorry, uh, screw threading on the lathe machine. And then this is the arrangement. This is the chuck into which we have a workpiece attached. This is the workpiece. This entire box is the workpiece. And on the workpiece, we are using a tool. This is the tool, this part. This tool is used to cut threads. These are the threads, okay. This is the block diagram. And then here we have this uh, actual diagram showing the different aspects and different uh, dimensions of the of the thread which is uh, cut on a cylindrical bar see here the first part is pitch pitch is nothing but it is the distance between two higher joints so here we have one higher teeth and this is another teeth the distance between these two teeth is called pitch and then this angle because this is a made helix angle i mean the thread will be cutted in the helical form so we should have the angle this angle is called thread angle and then have depth of cut so the depth from here to here this is called depth and uh, major diameter and minor diameter so they are all here so the major diameter and then we have minor diameter and then we have pitch diameter pitch diameter is nothing but it is the diameter between the pitches i mean the, it is the diameter between the uh, the pitch, the outer teeth and the center part. Okay. And then we have helix angle here and then we have root. The inner part is called root on which we can make these uh, crest parts. So crest is nothing but the tooth. Okay. So this is how the thread cutting will be done on the lathe machine. And then let us see how internal threads will be manufactured on a lathe machine. Okay. Suppose I have a object in which I have a hole. So this is the cross section as usually. 
So inside this hole, I have to make some threads in order to make it useful for screwing. Okay. When I insert a bolt into this, it can be easily rotated and it will be locked. So I have to make threads at this surface. So here I have to make threads. So what I will do is, I will simply fix this object into the workpiece. I mean, this workpiece is attached into the chuck and into this, I will send a tool. Okay, a tool is sent. This is the tool we can see in the picture. On this tool, we have this teeth, which are made up of carbide. So the tip of the tool is made up of carbide, which is very strong so that when it is sent into the workpiece hole and the workpiece is rotated, workpiece is rotating always in the lathe machine, then we can see, we can make the threads cut on the internal surface of the workpiece. Okay. So this part is where the threads are being cut. And this workpiece is well designed that it will make only helical grooves. Okay. It will make only helical grooves. It will not have so many surfaces. Like it will not have one or three. If this is the workpiece. It will not have multiple tooths. It, it will only have only one tooth. Okay. One edge will be there. This is the edge. Okay. On this, because of this, we can simply drill holes into the, I mean, we can drill threads into the internal surface of the workpiece. Okay. So the cutting tool, the shape of which depends on the type of thread to be cut is mounted in a holder and moved along the length of the workpiece by the lead screw on the lathe machine. See here, the lead screw, which is a part of the lathe machine will place an important role while doing this particular operation. So the movement is achieved by the engagement of the split nut and also called as half nut inside the apron of the lathe. So the lead screw plays a very important role which will help the operator to get a helical shape on the surface. Okay. We want to move the tool in a helical path. For that, we have to attach the lead screw to the tool post and then we have to move the tool post according to the movement of the lead screw. The axial movement of the tool in relation to the rotation of the workpiece determines the lead of the screw thread. Okay, the axial movement will give you the, it, it determines the lead of the screw thread. That is the axial distance moved in one complete revolution of the screw. So the rotation, how much rotation the lead screw is rotating, it will decide the axial movement of the lead screw. Okay, this will determine how much fastly we can cut threads on the surface and finally we can get uh, a smooth and uh, particularly a very smooth screw thread on the internal or external surface. And then we should go for second type of operation. So honing operation is another operation which is done on lathe machine or some other kind of machines which is used for getting a smooth surface. See here, honing is an abrasive machining process that produces a precision surface on a metal workpiece by scrubbing an abrasive grinding stone or grinding wheel against it along a controlled path. So honing process is nothing but it is a process which is used to make the surface very smooth, like it will make smoother than grinding almost equal to grinding. It is not smoother than grinding. And uh, we can get a precise surface on the metal workpiece by scrubbing with abrasive grinding stones or grinding wheel against the controlled path. We are going to use some kind of uh, abrasive material, which are generally grinding material. These are made, sometimes made up of ceramics or uh, carbides. So this is used for getting smoother surface. Okay, some applications in engineering they require a very smooth surface on the metal plates. So this process can be done by honing operation. So honing is primarily used to improve the geometric form of a surface, but can also improve the surface finish. So it can be used in either ways. Like honing is primarily used to improve the geometric form. We can improve the geometrical shape by slightly remo removing the material. 
Okay. Also, it can be used to improve the surface finish. In some engineering applications where the objects uh, has to be made very precisely, like in the case of aeronautics or aerospace applications. We have to machine the parts so smooth and they have to be super finished. Otherwise, they may contain or they may lead to failure. Because a moving automobile on the road does not need that much of uh, uh, precision when compared to an aeroplane which is floating in the air. Because it, it is floating in the air, even if the engine stops, it will, be, it will lead to collapse. But whereas an automobile on the road, if it fails, it does not require any kind of support. It is already there on the road. It will simply stop. Okay. But aeroplane is not like that. It has to be done super finish and the precision has to be given. And because of this, they can survive harsh conditions. Like in the case of aerospace applications, when we make some uh, spacecrafts. So these uh, spacecrafts are so precisely made that they will withstand higher loads. Even a small micro meteorite which hits this uh, spacecraft, this, this will create a huge damage. Because the micro meteorite which is very small in size like 5 inch or some, some something, even these uh, small sized objects can create large destruction because they are traveling very fast. They are moving at a very high speed in the space because there is no gravity. To stop their speed so they can cause a very huge damage on the spacecraft that is why the spacecraft body itself is made very strong that it has to withstand such heavy loads such smaller impact loads the impact is very small i mean the size of the particle which is hitting the spacecraft is very small but the impact is very large that because it is moving at a very high speed it will like it will be it will act like a bullet that is coming out of a pistol okay so typical applica oper applications are the finishing of cylinders for internal combustion engines air bearing spindles and gates etc so these are the applications of this uh, honing process where we have we can do honing process for getting better finish so they are mostly used for internal combustion engines bearing spindles gears etc okay and then there are uh, many types of horns, but all consist of one more uh, abrasive stones. These are held under pressure against the surface they are working on it. So there are different types of horning processes and horning machines are there. But in all of them, one kind of uh, abrasive stone is used. This abrasive stone is what responsible for getting smoother finish. Okay. Most of these abrasive stones are made up of ceramics or stones or uh, sometimes they are made up of carbides. So they act very hard and they will remove material very smoothly and finely. And then let us see what are the honing stones which are used for this honing process. So honing process, uh, we use a special tool called honing stone or horn, which is used to remove very little amount of material to improve the surface finish. Okay, to achieve precision, we use this kind of a uh, tool called honing stone or horn. Okay, the horn is composed of abrasive grains that are bound together with an adhesive. So the honing, honing to a stone. See here in this picture, this is the entire tool which is attached to a rotating uh, drilling machine kind of thing. The drill bit is uh, replaced with this honing. So see here, this part, this part is called the stone, which is used to remove the material. So this is called stone, honing stone. This honing stone is made up of abrasive particles which are holded together with the help of an adhesive. So all the particles of this are combinedly joined or made in the adhesive form. So where they will contain these very abrasive particles which can remove metal, very fine amount of metal, they can be removed with this process. We cannot do machining operations like turning by using this. This tool is used to remove the very smooth surface of the uh, metal parts. Okay. And this is another type of, uh, this is made up of ceramic. These are the stones which are used to remove micro surface elements. Okay. Generally, honing grains are irregular and uh, shaped and about 10 to 50 micrometers in diameter. 
So horny grains, the grains on this surface are very small. They are of the size of 10 to 50 micrometers. Micrometers itself indicates they are very small. Okay. And uh, the diameters are very small. Smaller grain size produces a smoother surface on the workpiece. So the size of the workpiece, the size of the grains on the tool, they are very small. They can create more smooth finish. Okay, they can give more smooth finish on the workpiece. And then horning stone is similar to the grinding wheel in many ways. We know grinding wheel is a wheel which is used for sharpening the tools in the workshop. So this horning tools, these are also the, the horning stones are very similar to those of a uh, grinding wheel in many ways, but horning stones are usually more friable. Okay, so that uh, they conform to the shape of the workpiece and they wear in. Okay, generally a uh, grinding wheel is made in the form of a wheel which is attached in a motor when it is used to, to grind the tools. Okay, but these honing stones, they are somewhat different. They are made in according to the shape required. Okay, if you want to use the honing stones for a particular operation, we have to make it in the particular way. Okay, different, uh, different uh, applications require different types of stones or different types of horns which are to be manufactured specially. And the workpiece they wear in, to counteract their uh, friability, honing stones may be treated with wax or sulfur to improve life. So to improve the life of this uh, honing stone, they has to be treated with wax or sulfur. Wax is usually preferred for environmental reasons. So sulfur is not so environmental friendly. So we will always go for wax for treating the surface of this abrasive particle called horn. Any abrasive material may be used to create a horning stone, but the most commonly used are corundum, silicon carbide, cubic boron nitride and diamond. So these are the materials by which a horning stone is prepared. So these are in nature, these all materials are very hard. They are not so easily be destructible. Even we know diamond is a very hard metal and we have some other metals like corundum, silicon carbide, cubic boron nitride. These are also as strong as diamond where they are used for grinding the internal surfaces or external surfaces for getting better smooth finish. The choice of abrasive materials is usually driven by the characteristics of the workpiece material. So depending on the type of workpiece, we can choose different types of uh, this stones for the preparation of honing stone. In most cases, corundum or silicon carbide are uh, acceptable, but extremely hard workpiece materials uh, must be honed using super abrasives. So if the workpiece is very extremely hard, we have to go for super abrasives, which are even harder than the workpiece. Okay, so this is all about uh, honing process and we have some other points. The horn is usually turned into the bore while being, being moved in or out. Okay, and then special cutting fluids are used to give a smooth cutting action and to remove the material that has been abraded. So while doing this honing process, because the abrasive particles are present on the honing stones, they may cause heat to the workpiece because we are rubbing the metal plate with the abrasive particles, it will create some heat. So we have to use some kind of uh, cutting oil or cutting fluid in order to remove these work small chips and also remove the heat. Okay, we have to use cutting fluids. And then machines can be portable, simple manual machines are fully automatic with uh, gauging depends on the application. So there are multiple machines which can be used for doing this honing process. Some machines are portable and some are uh, manual machines. So depending on the type of application, we can choose a particular machine. And then modern advances in abrasives have been made it possible to remove much larger amount of the material than was previously possible. So machines nowadays they are portable and they are so advanced so that in lesser time we can do more honing. This is this has displaced grinding in many applications where through machining is possible. So grinding can be done on the outer surface. When we want to do grinding on the internal surface of a metal part, we have to go for grind, this honing process only. So grinding wheel cannot go inside and it will remove the material. Okay. 
external horns perform the same function on the shafts so external horns also are there very similar to grinding wheels they can be used to perform the external surface finish on the shafts type of objects okay so this is all uh, all about uh, horning stones so in this lecture we have seen screw threading and horning operations so we will meet in the next lecture thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates